Paddy McGill, welcome to our game. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Ah, sure. Top of the side. Top of the side. You're um, you're you're doing the Dun and All podcast. You're on Ocean FM. I've heard you plenty of times there. So you're covering an awful lot of what's going on in Donegal this weekend. Nave Connell against uh, Kilku in the Ulster Club final. Is there a big buzz in Donegal over it? There's a huge buzz in Glenties, and there really has been since the outset of the championship. I suppose first of all. It's an unbelievable club championship. You know, I put out a tweet a couple of months ago before it started. There's been five different winners in Donegal in the past five years. Now, that was before Neve Connell went on and won it this year. And only Wexford had the exact same record in the football championship. So it just shows you how competitive it is. So there was a good buzz and it was all collated really close together. Donegal County Board made a decision that once Donegal are out, then you can have a free-for-all for the championship. And I think most players were quite happy with that. So it was week on week. There was one break between the semis and final. But Glenties are a football, football mad town. And just the buzz was unbelievable. And I think more so, Shane, because, you know, you mentioned the club championship podcast. We ran that over eight, nine weeks. And we went around to different clubs. And I suppose the first three to four weeks... Nobody was talking about Neve Connell, even mm. though they were beaten in the last two finals. They were, the, the words really on everybody's lips was the Ulster champions, Guidor and Kilcar. Well, I would have talked Kilcar because the McBrearties and, and yeah. the McHughes. Yeah, and two years ago, Slot Neil beat them in Ulster. And of course, Slot Neil, as we know, won three out of four Ulsters and came up short in two All-Ireland mm. finals under Mickey Moran, who no doubt we'll talk about. And Kilcar went through the league, and I often refer to them as a remor- remorseless machine without their county players. And I know ev- all teams were missing their county players, but they were missing Paddy McBrearty, Ryan McHugh, you know, guys like that there, um, Owen McHugh. And people felt that they had so many injuries the year prior, or the year after they won the, ch- the Donegal Championship, they thought maybe Guido might be a bit tired and it'll be Kilcar's year. And here we are, Neve Connell. Beaten in two finals, the comeback at the third attempt and win it. It really was an amazing, amazing feat. From a distance, it seemed crazy that they had to play three finals in such a short space of time to, to see off Guidor. And then after the third final on a Wednesday night, when they eventually won it, they then had to go out on a Sunday against Castle Rat. How, like, did you all think this is mad when, when, it, when you had that three games in such a sort? Of yeah, and they stage? tried to get it changed and, you know, it was the old Ulster said no. Um, but... <laughs> It was impossible, and I remember talking to the manager, Martin Regan, he was actually a year ahead of me in school, Ardra and Glenties, people all went to the comprehensive school in Glenties, and literally about an hour and a half after the final whistle, I said, Martin, Castle Rahan Sunday, and he just goes, Paddy, stop, stop, I said, what do you know about them, he goes, at the moment, honestly, nothing. But how could they? Like, yeah, it was yeah, three yeah. games in two weeks. And what was it? Six, seven games over eight weeks. And it was that victory. Because Castle Rahan had won. That was the one back-to-back in Ooh. Cavan. And last year, they were obviously celebrating, yeah. etc. And they were really, really focused. And I just think of all the victories this year, that was as good as any. Because Neve Connell had to be physically and mentally exhausted but that in itself says a lot about them not to mention i spoke to leo McLoon in the videos on our game uh, just this week he said they did go out that night and the following night and they got a great start to both halves against Casaran, but kind of faded towards the end and they were just hanging on i believe they did they uh they were just hanging on against castle rahan they were excellent against Clontibrick because they had the two week yeah. break but again going back to that castle rahan game they have a fantastic bench and maybe apart from Kieran Thompson, who's been sublime this year, I suppose the one beauty is they probably don't rely on any one player. Mm. They've eight or nine really, really good club players. Because Plenty of All-Ireland winners in there with, with Donegal. That's it, and Brett Malloy is 28. Um, there was another social media platform that thought he was about 35, 36. It's because these guys won a championship, their first ever in 2005, and some of them were literally just out of a crash. <laughs> so people think the age profile is way through the roof but it's actually not and now they've integrated some young lads but what i suppose glenties have six or seven soldiers that have been around since 0506 so you we mentioned talking about, we're yeah. talking about leo McLoon, you know the all ireland medal obviously in 2012 we're talking brick malloy brendan mcdyer was in and out of county squads you've one wade wing back who would be as i mentioned a club soldier hmm. should have played way way more county for different reasons then you have marty boyle played a bit of county and probably shane one of the most underrated footballers not in donegal but outside of donegal was anthony thompson yeah, yeah. phenomenal 
Gaelic footballer. Was he was he kind of commuting to England at one point? He was. He went to London briefly for a yeah. while. He studied in Galway and then he moved to London and he came back and he just creeps up every time like a thief in the night. He, I remember Brendan Devaney said to me years ago when he was playing for St. Junins, we never knew what to do with Anthony Thompson on the pitch. He's 33, 34 this year. Just an unbelievable player for mm. Neve Connell. And of course, he was there in 2012. And I mentioned, you know, he's no all star, but he was really, really appreciated in Donegal. And I suppose the narrative in the Northwest was always he never probably got that recognition outside the county. He'd probably be wearing 24. He'd be operating at number six. He's just so natural. And you have those guys. And then you have a couple of young guys like Jack McKelvey, Ethan O'Donnell. And really what strikes me, Shane, they are just so well coached. They, they, they just have that. I won't say that they're at the level of Curra Finn in terms of coaching because we know they won 8-9 minors and so many yeah, under-21s. Yeah. And, but they're almost like a mini Curra Finn. They, they just know what they're doing every single time. Leo McLuhan said there was plenty of criticism locally about the style of football that they play, that it's a bit, that it's fairly defensive. Is it, is it poor to watch? Uh, luck when we're immersed in it, I suppose, when you know we're all partisan in Donegal, we don't like to criticise our own, <laughs> we leave that for the national media. It is quite defensive, yeah, and I suppose Jim McGuinness also is Glenty's man, as yeah, you know, won yeah. a championship in 05 and was heavily involved there. And I suppose the thing was, in the previous two years and throughout these podcasts, Nick Connell were very defensive. Scored seven points in one county final, one seven and I think four points in the other. People were saying they need to try something different. But then Mark McHugh leading into the Guidor game says, you know what, I don't think they need to try anything different here at all. It may not have worked in the two finals, but it may work this year. Yeah. I would say they have the blanket defence down to a T. But the one thing about them, if they do go behind by three or four points, which hasn't happened much in 2019, they're well able to come out and play as well. They have some just such classy footballers. Mm. I mentioned Ethan O'Donnell. Can play half forward, can play half back. Um, guys like Brendan McDyer, Brick Malloy on the bench. Oh, McGettigan's a class player. Yeah. Had a difficult time, and he'll be the first admitted against Guidor in the three matches because Guidor are phenomenal at the back. The three or four county defenders, but Clontabret, I mean, bro. six points, wasn't it? Out of twelve, he's absolutely lightning, and he plays on the edge. And I remember talking to manager, another club manager, and he said, "You know what?" He's the kind of guy you want in your club team. He's a, he, he really is a good footballer. But yeah, there is there, there has been criticism. Not so much in Donegal, though, Shane, because Kilcar play a blanket defence. They play a counter-attacking game. Guidor play that game as well at times. Mm. Probably mixed it more last year, but yeah, they do. But they do what they do. And look, when you win the championship, Shane, and you know from playing yourself, when you're uplifting any type of trophy, it's justified. Well, you don't. You never even care as a match is going on whether this looks well or not. I actually have no issue with how any team sets up and plays. But if you fail, you're obviously going to get hammered for it, and you probably have to kind of accept that. But when they're sitting back, are they a good team to break on you then once they do win it? Oh yeah, absolutely. And as I said, they're so so versatile and yeah. how they move the ball. They have a player called Jack McKelvey, who I think won't be far off the Donegal team next year. Um, and I suppose that's the funny thing about Neve Connell. If you were looking at Donegal next year, you're probably not many people would have many definite starters for Donegal. But that just shows you what a good club team they are. But I mentioned Ethan O'Donnell, Jack McKelvey. Uh, they have two Doherty's, Alton and Union Doherty. Very, very underrated players as well. Anthony Thompson. Their transition is sublime. Mm. Kieran Thompson. I can't mention his name enough. His. He's forward, he's back, he comes up and he, that old saying, come with the man, come with the hour, it seems to be come with, um, come with the man, and that man all the time is Kieran Thompson. Yeah. So they can play it anyway. The, the way he's talked about it, it's like there's a beautiful left foot with a footballer attached to it, that he's yeah. just that good. He's so um, natural. Can I ask you about the, the legacy that would have been, or sorry, actually, the millstone around the neck for Nave Connell that two years in a row they'd lost the county final. And then, okay, they broke the mould by drawing and then drawing again in, in the county final this year before winning it. Was that something hanging over them? Because you don't want to get the reputation as that team that loses finals. It's interesting you say that. Only one team ever in the history of the Donegal Club Championship had lost three in a row, and that was Neve Columba, 94, 95, 96. Mm. And I think we were saying it in the podcast every week, and I think people from Glenties were getting quite frustrated at that. And do you know what was amazing? I interviewed one of the players after the game, and he said, 
on the third day. Everyone thought on the third day, this is the day probably, most neutral observers, this is the day Guidor are going to win. But I think it was Leo said himself, Martin Regan said to us coming out the tunnel, if we have to come back six days or seven days, we're not going back to Glenties without this club. They were ravenous animals on the three occasions. Like, because Shane, like, you have to just look at it. That's a fantastic Guidor side. Mm. I've no doubt had Guidor won it, they would be hot, hot favourites for Ulster they, again. They pushed Carf in so close last year, did Guidor? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. And they had Kieran Gillespie injured, and bar that, they had really the full deck. And what Glenty's done, they got on their faces. Because Guidor were good at doing that to other teams as well. So, But you rightly say, but I mean, people were saying, you know, they, were, they had this hunger, but... Look at Mayo, just because you have the hunger does not mean that you're going to get over the line. Like, no. and But in the tackle, Guidor scores, if you look back at the third day, the 8-7, four or five of those Guidor scores were absolutely nothing short of sublime. Mm. They had to work so, so hard for an opening and be accurate. And Guidor got a little bit of criticism the first two days for missing a couple of chances. But you know from playing yourself, it's one thing missing chances it's another when you're under severe pressure with two or three lads literally torturing you. <laughs> and their hunger is, you know, I interviewed the fullback AJ Gallagher after the third day and he, he just made a point and it really resonated with me. And I think everybody, he said, these guys in this dressing room, they bleed blue and white. And they really do. And I know we can say that about a lot of clubs, but these boys are operating at another level. Because Shane, they didn't win their first championship in 2005. And South Donegal was very strong. Uh, throughout the, I suppose, the 80s and 90s. Mm. They probably felt a little bit left behind in terms of that. They had neighbouring clubs that were really strong. Kilcar, Killybegs, Ballyshannon, even my own Ardra were quite strong. Mm. And they probably felt, but they got this underage structure in place, a little bit like Kilku. And they started developing and developing and developing. And they've turned into just, I suppose, probably a lot of people would say, arguably the best well-run club in Donegal. So you are mentioning that in the previous five years, there have been five different winners. And like I sometimes try and make sense of the fact that no Donegal team for 43 years had won an Ulster title up until last year. Is it a case that some of these teams are coming so battered out of out of Donegal that they're not quite um, showing their, the best side of them in Ulster or is it a, simply down to the likes of Cross McGlenn are just hammering everyone? Yeah, well obviously I suppose Cross McGlenn as we know had the monopoly mm. on Ulster so Brendan Devenny did say to mention him again one of the podcasts Donegal teams I suppose before McGuinness came in Donegal teams used to play lovely, lovely football mm. whether it was county or club and they went into Ulster and they got Naive. mentally and physically battered and naive yeah. Naive, absolutely, but it's funny I've asked a lot of club managers that exact same question and what a lot of them are coming back saying, Donegal actually winning the All-Ireland in 2012 has changed the mindset mm. in the North West and it's trickled down to the club scene because there was very little success at junior, intermediate and senior and I think now it's not good enough to go on and actually win Donegal. Now the mentality is, because there's a little bit of banter as well, even between the Guidor and Eve Connell lads, Guidor lads are saying, ah yeah, you beat us, but go on and do now what we done <laughs> win Ulster. So I think the mentality and the mindset has changed in Donegal and they believe now that they're good enough to go on, but we have to mention Cross McGlenn. I mean, they just had such a yeah. stranglehold on Ulster football, you know. But then you look at Derry, for example, I think seven different club winners and never could put it to county. And I know that's an argument for another day. Yeah, and then of course, like you mentioned Mayo and their hunger, but it doesn't matter how hungry you are, you don't always get across the line. Kilku, this they've won this is their seventh down victory in eight. Eight years. and eleven, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they've lost two um they've lost two Ulster finals in twenty twelve and sixteen, I think. Uh they're sure like in terms of hunger, there'll be no team more ravenous surely than Kilku. That's it, exactly. And again, you know, going back to Slot Neil, 2016, I think that finished 12 points to nine. And Mickey Moran was over um, Kilku. Uh, Slot Neil. Slot Neil, and they just brought Mickey in last November. And I think they, f they feel this team have been around a long, long time. And teams are getting closer and down to Kilku. Mm. And they feel it's not about down even anymore, even though they just crept over the line and down this year. They want an Ulster Championship. And they're, they're probably running out of time, as in for the likes of Conor Leverty, who's 34. 34 and a very busy man, as we know. He's mm. the Games Development Officer in Trinity College, yeah. and he's he's going to be in Banty's backroom team next year. They talk about leaders. 
that guy's meant to be some voice in the dressing mm. room. Like, um, I know down people are saying they can't believe that this Kill Coup team haven't went on and actually won an Ulster Championship. There is a feeling out there they're not as good as perhaps they were about three or four years ago. But what I'm looking forward to, I suppose, is are we going to see a chink in either armour? Neve Connell, Shane, have conceded one goal in the last eight championship games and that was actually a goal they'd be really unhappy with and a fortuitous enough goal for St Junins in the semi-final. Kilku haven't conceded a goal in their last three games that's two in Ulster in the county final. In the county, sem- in the county semi-final they conceded two goals they only conceded three points they're extremely yeah. defensive as well. Do you know Mickey Moran changed goalkeeper he gave Martin McCourt his, his first start in the quarterfinal against the Burn now, and he did concede well, that went to a replay. I can't remember which one mm-hmm. had the goals yeah. and which one didn't. But a great save the last day against uh, Derry Connolly as well. And that was early in the game when it really mattered. He's not a man. He, he's been one of the uh, one of the great innovators. The former, of course, he managed Donegal back in the day himself. And the former Donegal lad said, it's a pity their own discipline. And they all had their own little issues. And was so he said phase. he was a gentleman. Like, I mean, they loved him. They yeah. actually... Categorically across the board, I think 98% of them loved Mickey Moore. They said he was ahead of his time. A very, very good man to man, high emotional intelligence. And you know, mm. some of these guys, and they get a little bit older, people say, can they adapt to the modern game? I think Mickey Hart or Mickey. Um, Mickey Moran is contrary to the rule there. I think the players, it doesn't. he's timeless. They absolutely love him. They say before a match and in the middle of the match, he makes you feel really, really good. That's why, despite Neve Connell being favourites, people think Kilku might just be two or three years past their best. You just you have a guy like Mickey Moran and you just wonder, can they just get over the line with him? Like Early 80s, he was managing Derry while he was still a player. Yeah, but I mean, what sort of voice does he have to be to, to get to that? Do you remember his interview after Mayo beat Dublin back in... In 06? Yeah, I mean, his interview just... All he said was the word belief about four times. He was worn out. He looked like he was going to drop it. He's a fantastic... He's a fantastic manager and a great person. But the word is that he's very, very good. And look, as you mentioned, Neve Connell losing two finals in a row and trying to avoid a third... Kilku don't want their legacy like they lead the way in down titles on 17 mm. this is the one thing they want on their CV they want. They don't want to be looking back I know they lost to Cross McGlenn in 2012 and Slot Neal in 2016 they do feel and you know what Shane they'll feel they're going into this in a good way they were not great against Derry Gonley even though Derry Gonley are mm. better than people thought they knocked out the Tyrone champions yeah. And as probably, you probably know from playing yourself I would imagine there's no better way to go into a final than having probably underperformed in a semi-final. Yeah, you want people writing you off. I wonder then about the threats for, for Kilku. You know, obviously Jerome Johnson, beautiful left foot and a good player. Ryan Johnson, those bursting runs up the field. Connor Laverty, like you've mentioned, there's a, a host of Brannigans there as well. If you're Nave Connell, who are you worried about? Paul Devlin's a very, very good yeah. player and Connor Laverty. Now, they will drop very, very deep. Both, I think we're going to see an extremely defensive game. You mentioned Jerome Johnson. He's a fabulous, mm. fabulous player. Probably should have been a lot more Kilku players playing for down um, back through the years. You know, I know there was a couple of issues out, there. And yeah, there were. kind of down went downhill <laughs> and maybe the players are thought, I'm going to get more satisfaction playing for club rather than county so it didn't bother. Absolutely. Paul Devlin's definitely, definitely one they're going to mm. watch. I would imagine they're going to track Connor Laverty from one end of the pitch to the other. They know that He's very, very good. It's funny, he was doing um, a coaching course last week and I think he said the kick pass is always on. And he was also saying to somebody else that I know, he said, you know, Kilku have a great habit of getting goals at the right time. Mm -hmm. Are they going to get them against Neve Connell? It's very, very difficult to see. It's just going to be interesting if both teams bring bodies back, they bring their 12-13 back. Like, could we be on the verge of an... A six all, a seven six, well, like, an eight six. Like we could have this. When when you mentioned that everyone would drop back, I was imagining a situation where at different times maybe you'll have one up top, one marker, a sweeper in front, and a goalkeeper. So you'd have twenty six guys in one half of the field and four in the other. Uh, the, the ball goes over to the other side, and then it's the complete opposite, twenty six and four. Yeah. Could you see that happening? I could, and uh, just something I forgot to mention: Neve Connell's discipline. It's on another level. They're, they're in, turn, in the tackle now. Yeah. yeah, and when they do foul, it's like the old Armagh back in the early nods. I remember managers used to say, Armagh knew exactly where to foul. And Kilku are the exact same. 
Derry Gonnelly missed a lot of frees that day and mm. some of them were close in but a lot of them was the old half foul out around the centre of the park and it seemed to be a different player fouling a Derry Gonnelly player all the time pure good, accident yeah sure. yeah yeah, yeah. Good, good accident yeah. and they're just very good at that so the free taking is going to be very very important but Neve Connell Neve Connell have goals in them as well like mm. Owen McGettigan you cannot as we've said already give the likes of him space but I think Shane if either team gets three or four ahead going to be true it's going to be very difficult because it's going to be trench warfare mm. from the outset who comes in who comes out if if Connor or Kilku get a goal in the first half and can get it like the old Jim McGinnis Donny Gall teams if you get three or four ahead it's going to be very very hard to get back because then you know that you're pressing and you're pressing and then you leave gaps and both teams are excellent on the counter attack is, are there any matchups in particular that you're looking out for it's very hard to know at the moment it's, I suppose the big one is who Anthony Thompson picks up? Who's he going to pick up? Who's Jack McKelvey going to pick up? Um, Connor Lafferty's... It's very, very hard to know who they're going to actually put on Connor Lafferty. They may put Eunan Doherty on him. Um, Anthony Thompson can track guys around. It's At the moment, it's hard, to, it's, it's hard mm. to call that, yeah. And if you were to put your neck on the line, who's going to win? I'll get um, a lot of slating if I don't back my neighbours from six, seven mile over the road. Yeah, if, if, if they're your neighbours, you obviously want them to lose. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't win, you know. This podcast, they were saying, ah, oh, you never tipped us. And then if you tip them and they lose, people are saying, ah, oh, what are you tipping us for? So we can't win. Look, I think if it was the first round in Ulster and both teams had a week of a break, Kilku probably, because of their Ulster experience in the last three to four years, probably would be favourites and they were favourites briefly for Ulster mm. I know now Neve Connell are favourites I just think Neve Connell just have something about them and believe it or not I do think we'd win in last year is I believe whether it's subconsciously or consciously I believe Neve Connell want to now go on and do it and to be honest I think they have a, I think they've an eye on an All-Ireland final I really firmly believe that I, I think that they can beat what comes out of Leinster I firmly their mindset Carfin though Carfin are on the other side they'll feel they'll feel you know Leinster plays Ulster this year they will feel Carfin are the best club team I've ever seen bar mm. none I, I, would have head of the, I would have them ahead of the Cross McGlen teams because people say Cross McGlen which Cross McGlen team are we talking it's because mm. they've, they've two three different cycles of teams Carfin are the best well coached team I've, I've probably ever seen in Gaelic football at their level obviously well, Dublin are on another level but they're like an inter-county team playing like a division <laughs> low division two Definite Division 3 team yeah. playing And club. it's seamless, isn't it? Yeah. Remember last year Ian Burke was out for a while. It doesn't seem to matter. No. Then they bring in Ian Burke and you could mark him out of it. Mark Michael Lundy out of it. It doesn't matter. Their it's size to the Farahers, whoever steps up. Kieran Malloy, Liam Silk comes up and get a goal just the way yeah. they do. No, but the mindset of these Neve Connell guys, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And I know you say that about a lot of club teams. That's why I just think they have the bit between their teeth. I think now they'll believe that... Not only can they win Ulster, and boy will they celebrate if they win Ulster. And I led to believe everybody's quite happy that they're bringing it back to January as well. I think that's a good uniform decision by yeah. the GA. Well, having, <coughs> having done it a few times with Kula, it's, it's a nightmare. It's very annoying because like, people say, oh, the weather would be better in, in February and March. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Like We played an all Ireland final in Croker on March 17th, and it was so cold you could barely hold a hurley. So, and you know, it's just as bad trying to shoot did you find the, Did you find the long break? extremely complex yeah. yeah I know teams like Curriffin obviously have mastered it but yeah. for a team that haven't perhaps won a pro pro provincial title before um, I don't know if it, if it really affects how you perform but it's just very annoying because you'd like like who in their right mind in any competition would leave that length of time have three months for two games yeah. it's just insane Yeah. So um, and it's unfair on the county guys as well isn't it mm. if you have three or four county players because it's probably say your team ha your county team has a good league campaign yeah. and they're four or five games in it kind of leaves them at a bit of a oh, disadvantage huge. a grave disadvantage probably yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely thanks for that thanks very much good man